What's going on YouTube is Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video and God, I love doing YouTube videos because tell you what, it gives me the opportunity, the kind of opportunity to see things that you guys probably don't get the privilege to see and that's not uh, a bragging thing. It's just, I get to visit the Ministry of Defence building, for example, see what they're doing behind the scenes. Some I can bring to you, some I can't. And uh, today I've just got back from the MOD building in London and uh, working with uh, the Department of Science and Technology Lab or laboratory. And uh, they showed us some of the stuff that they've been working on, some of the stuff that the scientists have been working on to make sure that the de defense or the defense uh, system here in the UK for the UK government is top notch. So they're bringing innovation, they're bringing science, they're bringing technology to the world of defense. And uh, yeah, we got to see a few things and um, Three things stuck out to me, actually maybe four, but I'll talk, to, I'll talk about the main ones probably in more detail than the, than the other bits that I got to see as well. Some of them are quite old, they're not that new, but they're still in development, so they're quite experimental, they're not, they're not final. The stuff that they try out and see how they can improve it and what they can do before it becomes commercial. Maybe not commercial, maybe more something that they can actually use in the case that they need to defend the country. But... Yeah, let me place the camera down because my, my arm's aching and uh, I've just got back, got a bit of green tea and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it in a, in a bit more detail and see what it's all about. Let's go. Right, so the Minister of Defence building in London, Whitehall, uh, Westminster, is not a building that you can just stroll into. It's a building where you need a privilege, some sort of access uh, to get in there. So again, we got invited over so to check out some of the latest stuff uh, that they've been working on. So the first one that I saw was uh, around autonomous uh, vehicle. So in this sense, the vehicle itself and uh, a boat. So the boat, for example, actually did a run recently uh, through the channel to, all the way to, to France uh, with no issues at all. So that's autonomous and everything's powered by artificial intelligence. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Viking, which is a, uh, a machine, a, like a, a robotic autonomous vehicle that's designed to be at the front line, to do that last mile for the soldiers and the front line. So for example, if they needed like extra ammunition, they needed uh, food maybe, uh, we can, they can summon it. So using uh, a terminal, maybe on their wrist or whatever, they can go, well, I want this here. I need extra ammunition. I need extra food. I need extra uh, whatever. I need something medical uh, assistant, whatever. They can send this right there straight away to pick up or to deliver things for, uh, to them right in the front line, which is pretty cool. And now there's a debate about how this is going to work in the, in the sense of the real world. Uh, so if they were to use it on the front line, is he going to be able to survive uh, RPG, IUDs and stuff like that? Is he going to be able to survive these things? But again, this is quite experimental. So they're still working out how they're going to make this bulletproof. So it's battery powered. So you can imagine if that uh, gets shot at, it's going to explode straight away. Uh, the one that you can see on screen right now is actually the model uh, version of it. So it's not the full size. Uh, so this is just designed to scale so we can sort of get an idea of what it is. So this thing can actually map its uh, direction where it needs to go, uh, even in areas where GPS is, dis is uh, actually denied. So you can actually do that. It can work across all different kind of terrains, uh, cross country ter terrains. Uh, there's no remote control uh, active here. It's just something that you summon, it knows where it needs to go. Uh, it uses camera uh, stereo vision as well, which is pretty cool. It can carry up to half a ton of equipment, of items on it, which is pretty cool. And it, it's a hybrid diesel electric system. So you can do 20 to 30 kilometers uh, using electric drive alone. And it can do 250 kilometers on that diesel hybrid system. Again, that's a lot of distance that this thing can actually cover. Besides just using it in the army, you can use it for like human, humanitarian uh, assistance. You can use it for disaster relief. So in situations where you don't have to worry about RPGs and that kind of stuff. And I actually like this kind of idea. I like when science and technology is being used uh, for reasons like this, where it actually helps humanity in that sense. At the moment, this experimental version will cost will cost around 200 grand to buy, uh, but there's like, I think one of these in the whole world uh, or so. I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. But the whole idea is once they've designed it, they're gonna drive the cost down by making it more available uh, to other people like US Army, uh, UK Army, around the world, they, they can make it available. So that drives the cost down as well. Next is the Mass 13, uh, which is uh, something that's for protection for the Royal Navy uh, future ships from potential threats. Uh, so this is very cool. It's 13 meters long on manned system. So there's no uh, person at all on it. It's fully autonomous and uh, it operates as a waterborne drone to identify mines and other threats uh, for ships on sea, uh, which is pretty cool. I keep saying everything's pretty cool, but to me, these things are pretty cool, the way they work and the way they've been designed to actually work. 
This platform can be controlled remotely from a rig and uh, it has the ability to operate alongside a naval task force and collect uh, intelligence related enemy vessels related to enemy vessels as well. So it can be out there just collecting information and sending data back as well. One thing that was mentioned as well when speaking to the guys there is that the actual uh, boat itself, they're not designed to be offensive uh, uh, machines. They're not there to start chucking off uh, missiles or like torpedoes or whatever. Although this sample here has got those torpedoes loaded on the back, but I think they're not, they're not designed to be like that. They're designed to be purely for defensive uh, mechanism, to be off defensive mechanism for ships and stuff on sea. Next is what they envision the future soldier would look like and what they will be wearing and, and that kind of stuff. Because at the moment, what you have to worry about is the kit, what they wear, how comfortable it is, how easy is it to take on and off, how easy is it for them to attach electronics onto it without uh, affecting what they do, but designed to actually enhance what the soldiers, what the military already do out there in the field. So this vision is designed for 2020 to 2025. It has this integrated integrated power and data system on the back. So before they start to like carry big power packs, they've tried different ways of having a single source of power. But this format that they've got now is this single pack of power cell and all the cables are tucked away and streamlined into one uh, flat connectors. So you get that cable that run all the way to the side and they can use flat connectors to connect them uh, to the system. So again, it just stops all that cable from just running around the body, that kind of stuff. It makes it easier for them to take on and off to detach. Easy to adjust if you're getting a vehicle that's tight space, for example, you can easily adjust it without feeling uncomfortable, which is pretty cool. There's glasses on the, hel on the helmet that's connected as well via a quick, again, flat connection. And also they look at our future for AR goggles which I can't wait to see how that's actually gonna work. It can tell you information around you, um, quick information as well relayed to the soldiers. Uh, they can switch vision very quickly, all that kind of stuff. One thing they can also do with this system as well is the ports can be configured depending on what task you've been uh, tasked to do. So if you're on the offensive, your connect connectivity and stuff might be totally different, configured differently to someone who's meant to be giving you instructions or a sniper might have a totally different configuration, for example, which is very uh, forward thinking if you have to think about it that way. Also, the way they've used the cable instead of using, say, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity is because those connections are uh, liable, they, they, they're vulnerable to hacking, they're vulnerable to losing connectivity, they're vulnerable to people being able to spot locations, soldier locations. So using cables just makes it easier and reduces that risk for the soldier wearing it. What they've also done is worked with the Royal College of Arts for textile design to make sure things like the Velcro are quite silent. So you imagine if you need to be quiet, you don't want the Velcro to be the thing that gives off your position of, or you being at that location. So they, a lot of things like that gets designed so that each soldier that's wearing this feels very comfortable and everything makes sense technically. Lastly, this one was quite interesting to see in person. Again, everything is to scale and all experimental, uh, but it's still testing them. They might become of use in the next few years or so, but we don't know that yet. And this one is a high laser beam, high energy laser beam system that can be attached to a ship or whatever. And it's called the Dragonfire Laser Directed Energy Weapon System. And uh, with this, you've got kilowatts of high energy lasers that can get fired uh, to any target. And uh, this firing laser is cheaper than firing, say, uh, missiles, for example. So using laser is cheaper at any point. As long as you've got fuel in there, you can just fire it anywhere you wanted to fire it. And it's very, very precise because it's laser as well compared to radar system where if you fire a, uh, a bomb, for example, remotely, it will hit the area, the area, uh, but it doesn't mean that it will hit the actual target, like precisive as it's not going to be as precise as using laser. On the device itself, you notice the target monitor is right on the top right of the actual thing there, so that's where they use the target where they need to go, and it uses that millimeter wave IR camera as well. And then to the left, that big circle there is your high resolution tracker. And below that monitor is where the actual laser beam is to shoot uh, a weapon to wherever you want to shoot it to. I find the whole thing fascinating because these are things that I see in movies uh, or hear about or read about, but actually seeing a prototype or a scale of it in person was quite fascinating to see. And uh, that shows you where science and technology is driving uh, the, the defense in the UK, for example. And I'm all here for that to see where that goes. 
So that's it for my visit to the MOD building. Thanks to the Defence uh, Science and Technology Laboratory for bringing us over and checking out what they've been up to, where the science and technology is going for the defence of the country and all that kind of stuff. Guys, I know this content is not for everyone, uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, but in the meantime, if you like it, let me know as well in the comments below if you have any questions as well. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification as well, so you'll be one of the first people to know every time there's a video on this channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.